supposed to be, whoa, oh, that's funny. I couldn't hear anything. <laughs> Did you hear anything? It's probably because I had these custom earphones in. These are some Fit Ear MH335DW, made here in Japan from a local company called Fit Ear. They're basically all the rage in the audiophile world that probably has nothing to do with Minidisc, and for good reason. Uh, but I'm going to try to introduce them slowly to us in the Minidisc world and, well, this video I'm actually not going to talk about Minidisc. I'm going to talk about... Oh, this is hard to explain. It's hard to... It's hard for me to come to this point in the video, or in this series, kind of on Minidisc, and talk on something that's not Minidisc. In fact, I don't know what to do here. What I'll do is show a Minidisc player. This is the MZ E33, my favorite portable. Kind of. There are some portables I prefer, but I love that this thing takes two different style of batteries. You can pop in an LR6AA style here and also put a gum stick in there. The problem is that its battery compartment is absolute balls, often popping open by its own. But I brought it here also to show sort of size difference. It's a little bit thicker. You know what, I better take this thing out of its case. I better also show you what it is. By the way, boys and girls, I'm listening to the album called Blah 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 by Iggy Pop, which was a favorite album of mine since about 1999, and the first or second album I ever recorded on minidisc back in Sweden. Love this album. Also love this player. This player is called the DPS-1, and it's from Onkyo. It is actually, I think, their first budget player in the DP series, and it is phenomenal. When I say phenomenal, what I mean is, now let me pop this bad boy out. We're going to look at this a little bit closely, a um, little bit more closely. Other, cl we're going to look at a little more closely from some other angles. But let me just turn this thing around for you. It holds two micro SD cards, so you can put 500 gigabytes in one, 500 in another, and get a whole terabyte of music in there, which certainly would saturate my music collection. It's got a fake leather textured back. Its volume, strangely, goes up to 60, which I think is a horrible metric to go up to. It should be 50, should be 100, should be in increments of 25 or 10, and not 10 and 6. But um, it is a beautiful player. Wait, was the volume going up? I think it was. It's a beautiful player that, well, as much as I like and as much as sounds wonderful. By the way, I did a review of it at Headphonia about a year ago. Um, I did measurements, which you will see in this, um, in this review, and they're all exemplary. This player costs, back then, when I purchased, around like 320 US dollars. It's currently gone down. In fact, I don't believe it's still in production, because there's a newer version called the DPS-1A, and that one evidently might be going out of production as well. So it had a limited production run of about a year, and the people that are buying it are not regular music lovers. These would be audiophiles that know, know the name Onkyo and that also probably don't go to the regular shops like Yorobashi. They probably go to Earphone, probably Fujia. They probably troll forums. They certainly would be people from HeadFi. But this thing performs well. The other thing it does and does so damn well is it hisses about zero. You know how I uh, mentioned in the other video in my I think it was my second or third deep uh, mini disc video was that the sharp uh, Alvi players generally now there's one bad exception of course that's a DP 700 but generally those things don't hiss at all well this one hisses as little as them if not a little bit less so there's not a player on the market that's gonna hiss less than this one so you can use expensive and super sensitive earphones like <laughs> these tangled Custom earphones, which cost, what are they, like two grand almost? You can use them perfectly well with this player. The only proviso, the single proviso is that when you plug them in to the headphone output, there is a little bit of load effect. And so you will get a slight dropout in bass. You also get a slight uptick in treble, maybe a little mustache wave up in the, like around four hertz to six, six, sorry, four kilohertz to six kilohertz around that area but it's not audible. It's probably around a decibel or two, and I don't think a decibel or two is audible in any, um, to any degree when you're listening to music. Otherwise, 
it is pristine. And these earphones, as much as I love them, are not, unfortunately, are not compatible with my favorite portable mini disc player. The reason is noise. This thing hisses seriously. It hisses a, a little bit more than the MZB100, which of course is the first um, MD player that I noticed in my video to not pass the iPod video challenge. So it hisses a little bit more. But as much as I love this player, as much as I love the simplicity of its um, inter um, interface, which is track forward, pause, track back, hold button here, and a power at the top, and it has an interesting scroll system. As much as I love it, it's not the same thing as walking out of my house with a mini disc or five in hand to listen to for the day. I won't browse through my mini discs, be like, you know what, today I want to listen to Iggy Pop, U2, Armin van Buren, um, uh, and whoever else. I will be like, eh, I got all my music with me. I'll just uh, listen whatever, whenever I want. And there's a beauty to that, but there's also the problem that I don't care so much about what I'm listening to because it's always at my fingertips, just like the knowledge. You know, if you want, you can like debunk anyone's argument going to Wikipedia. There's problems with Wikipedia, of course, but we have knowledge at our fingertips, but we don't have the sort of investment. And that's my main problem with players like this. But in terms of sound, you're not really going to get any better. I know that there's players that have more powerful outputs that may be a little bit better at separating the left and the right channels, you know, this and that, that might have a better EQ engine than this one. But in general terms, when you're listening to music, you're not going to find better. So this video is essentially me fawning all over this beautiful Onkyo DPS-1. Except for its volume scale, and you'll see with its interface. The review that I published at Headphonia, let me see if I can wake up the iPad with my thumb. I did it. Check that out. I'm going to click Safari. I'm hitting Safari right now. Uh, Safari is offline. Wi-Fi. Let's turn on Wi-Fi. Um, the review I did at Headphonia is called, and I have it, let's see here. Headphonia DPS-1. The review, Japanese Wi-Fi should be faster than this, is called Onkyo DPS-1 Rubato. By the way, they call this thing Rubato. It's not my name for it. That's their nickname for it for some reason. Um, whatever. I called it Dehumanize. And the reason is because it's graphical and basic user interface aside from the hardware elements is horrible. Um, the screen is bad. The scrolling speed is bad. If you've got a lot of albums, it could take some minutes for it to wake up, to realize everything that's on it. Inside is like 16 gigabytes of space, so you can put a lot of music on it anyway. But when you put cards in there, it takes a while for it to update. Um, it's not a fun player to use. It's just a beautiful sounding player, and you don't need an external amplifier. It just sounds wonderful as it is, but it is not nice to use. Why don't we take a couple of minutes to check it out close up. There are very few players on the market that allow you to put two micro SD cards in here. So this is a big plus and this is a thumbs up. The hardware interface here includes a pause button, a track back, a track forward, of course the scrabble, the pause and the play button are combined. And there is here the power button, as you can tell. The smaller port here is for balanced. Now, if you are a sharp um, Alvi player owner, you in the mini disc world, of course you know about balanced. And of course, if you've been with um, portable players for a while, balanced has been um, um, on the market for some years now and has been the backbone of a lot of marketing, etc. I don't necessarily believe that balanced is going to give you better sound, but um, if you have a really bad headphone output or a bad DAC, if you include a balanced um, port into your unit, it can sometimes make that bad sound a little bit closer to the original signal. And of course, everything has to cleave to the original signal. So balance isn't gonna, isn't gonna sound better just because it's balanced. It really has to basically live up to the spec of the original signal and sometimes it can do better. This player 
you will notice, at least from the measurements, isn't quite as good as some players in balance, but in single-ended output, it spits a wonderful, wonderful signal with just a little bit of load effect, but you're not really going to get much better than it. Here is its volume attenuator. As you know, it goes up to 60, which I find a very strange number to go up to. I'm sure that they have a reason for that. The DAC maybe increments in steps up to 60 or 120 or something like that. And if they figured that 60 was enough, I really wish they would have done that to 50 or to 100. 60 is just a weird number to multiply by or to multiply into. Um, of course, it connects via micro USB, and that's where you can um, transfer your music into its internal 60, 16 gigabytes of storage. It's not fast, but it gets the job done. Here's the fake leather textured back. What I like about it is it doesn't scratch because it's not metal. Um, it's got the Onkyo logo, logo here. It's not the most handsome player. It's got quite a bit of a chin here, and the screen is not good. The contrast is bad. You turn it on angles, sorry, it's quite messy. Turn it on angles and it goes yellow. But check this out here. The interface is, well, here, let's go. All right, you see how long that took? The three presses to get to the, the main screen here. And we go to library and then let's go to albums. Let's scroll through the albums. I've got a whole bunch of albums here. Arcade Fire, Armin van Buren, U2. But you scroll like this, and here's the indicator for how far along the entire catalog we are. And you can tell that there's some lag. Not, not, not so bad from when I touch to when it scrolls down, but the screen updates quite slowly. We're probably looking at around 15 frames per second, and it, it kind of jellos quite a bit. And if you want to do it very fast, it's just, it doesn't, sort of register all the clicks and when it does it's just not smooth and that's not nice especially if well considering that everyone today is using um, smartphones and smartphones are in general just completely smooth so this is a big problem with this sort of player if they can't live up to essentially the um, interface feed interface speed that we expect from smartphones what they have is impediment to feeling like they are up to spec uh, you go into an album here, um, and it's got the same problems with scrolling. Also, when you scroll, it doesn't kind of give you an indication that it's at the top or the bottom, other, other than just a hard stop, and it doesn't move anymore. Other thing I've noticed is that gapless playback is not perfect on it, which is a shame because, especially if you're coming from Minidisc land, gapless for most units, I would say about 95 to 99% of units, works perfectly. There are some units that have a problem with gapless, and those would be um, from Can Panasonic, I think from Panasonic, as well as Kenwood, but they're not all of their units. It's kind of, a, it's kind of messed up. But anyway, we are now into what? DAPs have been around for, for like over 20 years, and still gapless is something that doesn't work across the board, which is a big problem. Um, yeah. So, but this thing, uh, it'll play back... Um, Basically, anything you can put on it. Um, it's got dual DACs, does up to 32-bit, 192 kilohertz. It'll play back those files. Um, you know, as you can tell, it's touch. You can get an album view. You can look at the controls here. By the way, scrobbling is actually pretty quick. Finding the scrobble point, however, if it's right in the edge, well, it works actually. That's not bad. I'm actually amazed by that because it's actually the iPod and the iPhone is actually a little bit harder to do. You've got this like tiny little point and you just got to pull, pull, ah, but you can't pull it. I see. You have to touch the exact point, but it's, it's not bad. And you can scroll very quickly through the song, which is nice. Um, the, as you can tell, <laughs> it currently thinks it's in balanced mode. And of course we would take a balanced cable like this. It's a four pull. 2.5 millimeter diameter and it goes into the balanced and that would feed something like our earphones, our um, fit ears. Now there are some problems, a number of problems if you're using like really expensive um, multi-armature earphones. There can be polarity issues with these things so that you have some problem with the drivers aligning properly electronically 
with a balanced signal, but that's not for all. And in general, it's not as big an issue as it was some years ago, because a lot of earphones are now designed polarity-wise to work with balanced signals. If you have a dynamic earphone, like the Sony EX100, which, or 1000, sorry, which I'm gonna pick over here, um, which is also now my favorite mass-produced earphone, and I've got to thank, what is his name? Hawaii Bad Boy from HeadFi. Um, I follow his channel, he's here on YouTube, and he is called Good Guy Bad Audio, or Good Good Audio Bad Guy, something like that, I don't, I don't know. He's, he's got a great channel, just sitting, just talking uh, honestly about audio gear. Um, anyway, these are just amazing, and he recommended these some weeks ago, and I, I fully agree with everything he said. Um, I picked them up used on the, on the market for like 200 bucks, and they're worth every single penny. Or yeni, sorry, we're in Japan, so yeni. Um, another thing I want to point out here is that I got a case for this bad boy here. And the case is not great. It's ugly. It's not made by Onkyo. Onkyo have their own cases. They have one made out of aluminium and one made out of, they say, leather, but I doubt it's real leather. Um, well, it does a job, but it blocks your... Um, cards. If you want to put another card, or you want to change out your card, you've got to take out the case. The case is not hard to take out, but it's just not a nice case. It's got a little, I don't know why you would even use a chain for this thing. But uh, yeah, you can go into sound um, settings here. You can adjust a number of things. Custom sound, that means you can access your equalizer and you can do a number of things to an equalizer. You can choose from any of these presets or you can go to a custom and adjust it on a parametric, a parametric um, equalizer, which is good, and you can save it um, to whatever you want to call it. I'm not, I don't tend to use equalizers um, on DAPs, so we're going to turn that off. Um, but you can upsample this thing as well, all the way to 176 or one, 192 or, or 176, and you can choose sharp um, filters, which is really cool. Currently I have it on sharp and the only reason I have it on sharp is because I have it in measurement mode where I want to ensure that when I'm measuring this thing um, as a control, so whenever I measure the output of one of these units, I first take a control test of something that I've measured for at least a year and I know all of the output for, um, uh, metrics for. And so this one is set to sharp, which means that basically the it has essentially no roll off at the top. But if I'm listening to music and just enjoying, I really like a nice slow roll off. So basically highs are rolled off um, slowly. So you get a bit of a, <laughs> I, I don't know what to say, sort of a soft sound up top. Um, let's see, anything else? Lock range adjust. Ah, I'm not sure what this is. <laughs> it's something, it's one of the many things that you can do to adjust sound here. Um, I'm not, don't do a whole bunch of that. Um, internet, if you go into, in, well, if I was connect, I should be connected to Wi-Fi. Click here. Wi-Fi, wake up. There we are. I go to internet. Eh. All right, well. All right, I'm having a little bit of problem um, connecting to internet, so let's not bother with that at the moment. Uh, you can do Bluetooth, connect to wireless earphones, which is a wonderful, wonderful feature. And one of the reasons that I really have a hard time moving fully to, back to mini disc because I love wireless earphones and they're good now, um, but, uh, yeah, I've got, I've got the AirPod, I've got Flare Pro, Flare Pro Gold, they're just amazing earphones. But, yeah, you can, well, let's see here, select balanced. You can also turn this thing into a DAC for your computer. You would go down, down, down. Where is it? Where is it? It's somewhere here. Where is it? Never mind. I don't know where it is here. But you can select this, you can connect this thing via USB and this can be a DAC for your computer and it will sound better than basically any computer out there. Um, and it's powerful. Uh, this thing is almost as powerful as the $3,500 AK380 um, or the AK240 from Astel & Kern. It's a damn good sounding unit. It's powerful. The screen is crap. The scrolling is not very good. The um, interface is not wonderful. Um, audio. Ah! There we are, USB audio. You can click this into USB um, and then it will work for uh, with DSD files for, um, what, what is it called, DSD over P, whatever, <laughs> shoot. I'm not very, I'm really not good at this. But it, it basically does a whole bunch of things all in one device. It can replace a sound card, 
it can hold your entire music storage. Uh, it sounds really good. It's small enough to fit in a pocket, just a little bit bigger than a compact mini display from 1998. And of course, a lot larger than something that came out like around 2002, like the MZEH-1. I'm sorry, that would be about 2004. But it's a damn good sounding unit and it just works. Um, it's not as fun to use as a mini disc for me personally. But if you are a mini disc user and you're thinking, you know, I'd like to check out a DAP. Well, this DAP is basically better sounding by far than any portable mini disc player. And it will take all of your music and it will do wireless, uh, Bluetooth, it'll do DSD files, it'll play anything 24-bit, even 32-bit, up to 192 kilohertz. It's got twin DACs, it's just as good as you can get. Um, battery life is not as good as a, a mini displayer, of course, as a modern mini displayer, but you'll get, you can get uh, any, between 12 and 20 hours on it, no problem. Um, and of course, if you're using it as a DAC for your computer, then you don't have to worry so much about this thing because it will charge when it's connected to your computer. Very good unit. It's a shame that the case is not very good, at least the one I got, and the interface is not so good, and it's got a massive chin here, and the screen, which is touch, and you are supposed to navigate this thing via touch, is not very good, but that's how it goes. Anyway, I just wanted to point this out, especially through my mini disc, um, my mini disc series that I listen to a whole bunch of things and that I've been on out of mini disc and in mini disc for a long time. And I have a whole bunch of DAPs and this is probably the one that I will keep. I'm actually selling my Sony ZX300. I like it, beautiful player, hisses too much for me. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other ones that I find too big or that their edges are too sharp and they're just not comfortable to hold. And, or they get too hot or they're just too expensive. This one here is basically perfect um, as far as I um, am concerned. And yeah, this is the Onkyo DPS-1. Please keep an eye out for it. You'll probably see it in some other my videos, especially when I'm testing um, earphones, as well as whenever I mention that I have a control um, for testing outputs of MD players, this is a control. If my unit uh, my measurements don't measure up to what I have on file, then the control is foul. And so I will then recalibrate everything until I get the same exact measurements. And then I will start measuring something like this. But anyway, a video coming up on this bad boy here as well. It's a great mini disc player with a really, really bad battery. Oh, look at that, it's popping out. It's just horrible. Great mini disc player though. Look at that. Mm. You got your base settings here. You got your, I hate this thing, the AVLS. I wish Sony didn't put that on their, their other players. But uh, this is a damn fine unit and it looks like it's got a Klingon axe on the back. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope that it was helpful for you. I hope that uh, if you're looking for portable units that are you know around this price, around 300 bucks or less, that you would consider it. You know, it, it now goes any, it would between anywhere from like 200 bucks to 300 bucks. It's a great player. Its um, successor goes from a lot more. It's around four to 500 bucks now. Um, but you know, this MD player came out in 1998 at 300 bucks, something like that. And this one was about 350. And of course the Japanese yen um, hasn't actually gone up or down in value since then, but um, uh, I mean inflation. So essentially, if we're looking at the same price, I don't know what it would be in the United States, what this cost for you and what this cost for you. But here in Japan, you're looking at two devices over the, um, basically with 19 years between them that come at the same price. And it's interesting to look at how the market, maybe not the market, but what we can buy for our money has changed in 19 years. I think overall, the elegance of being able to switch from the body, it has controls for bass right there, and all the controls that you need, um, including stop, play, track forward, track back. Do I have that right? Yeah, all of those functions are, are right on the body and easy to access. Um, I like that, but I do prefer an inbuilt rechargeable battery, which is pretty good on this. I prefer that this, I like that this has a lot less hiss. I really do kind of miss Minidisc and I wish that someone would bring out Minidisc for the small market of us that still exists. But basically, 
it, this is, video is to say that in 19 years, what's really changed is you can put a lot more music in your player, you can listen to a lot more music at one more time, you can basically vacillate, do I want to listen to this, listen to this, you can end up browsing your music more than you end up playing it, and you can end up fiddling, and this connects to internet, it doesn't, you can't browse internet or anything, but there's a lot of options, but when it comes to the elegance of actually choosing your music before you go out, of actively <laughs> deciding, I want Iggy Pop today, and just Iggy Pop, you bring your five Iggy Pop albums with you and that's it. You're like, you know what, I kind of wish over lunch I could listen to Trance. And maybe I'm kind of working on a story or something. I want something without um, vocals in it. Well, unfortunately, text is in your music and it's Iggy Pop stuff, which is blah, blah, blah. Um, well, you, you can't do that if you got mini discs. But with these new players, you can do it and they sound really damn good. There's no mini disc player on the market that ever sounded as good as this. But they're not as fun to listen to in my opinion. So anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you leave a, a thumbs up or a thumbs down. If you leave a thumbs down, leave a comment. I'm looking forward to interacting, you on the, interacting with you on the video. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.